Let's there. bring in Tony Dwyer, Category Genuity. He does say that new highs are ahead for the year, but don't buy just yet. Why? You get a reflex rally off a, a non-recession crash. We got that. It's typically 13%. This one was 15%. It's taken a little bit longer to get up to that 15%. I'm really torn. I was just talking to Todd off air. I mean, there, there's a good case to be made for a bigger drop, and there's a great case to be made on the breadth thrust indicators for no retest. So I'm kind of in this no man's land where I don't think if anybody comes on set and tells you, oh, I, this is going to happen, I, I think they're making it up. There's too good a data on both sides. So where I fall out, Mel, and where I go to the new high category is I, I'm on Tim's, I'm in Tim's camp. The Fed made a change, and the change was that they went neutral. And I, as you guys know from when we did the show uh, at the end of last year, I think we're kind of in a 1995 analog. You had a president in turmoil. You had 100% ter tariffs threatened against Japan. Japan was as, as big as China is today to, today to global GDP. You had the Fed almost invert the curve at the end of December by bringing down the 210 to, to 7 basis points. The Fed tightened on February 1st to 95. They eased July of 95, and again in wow. December of 95. You didn't go into a recession, and but they it were kick started. Easing. They were easing. So you're assuming that they're. I'm, I'm making. You're uh, assuming yeah. that they flipped it. Not the next only was it neutral, cut. but they're cutting now. And I disagree with you. They're not neutral. Fed funds rate minus the CPI. It's still positive. They're not neutral, and you still have QT. So Tim and I were just talking about it as you were introed. If they're still removing liquidity, that's not a done deal. I, yet. I see. I would disagree with you on that. They're remo removing liquidity. If excess balances are coming down. At, on the balance sheet at the Fed by banks who are removing excess reserves at the same pace that the Fed is bringing down the balance sheet. There's no, I've not talked to a bank CEO or investor that has had a liquidity problem. So if you're removing liquidity, it's got to actually affect the liquidity. So I, I get that the QT is taking money out, but it's money that's not used and it's coming off the free reserve. But Tony, isn't it fair to say, though, that in late November and December, there was a lot of concerns about liquidity? Why would our Treasury Secretary be calling around financial institutions if Correct. there weren't? I mean, because so, he didn't but, get it. But, I was but, talking I know, to but banks. Happens CEOs. fast. And, I was talking so, to a couple of bank CEOs, Dan. Yeah. I because I didn't get it. It's above my brain scale. Like this whole thing's above my brain scale. So I went to guys that actually are interacting in the interbank market and have the reserves on the balance at the Fed. And they didn't get it either. Like, they literally don't understand. So it became a market event. And that's where I was really so torn at the end of the year. what do you think going to happen, though, in the next few months? We're going to have a forced merger of Deutsche Bank with some other German entity. How that's do you good think news. Global, well, is it good news? Yeah. I, I mean, because I just don't know. Because, because that's been a problem. That's been a problem. Okay, we take so, uh, Deutsche thought Bank risk out of the It keeps the ECB off the game. But nobody, but nobody backed up Bear Stearns. But nobody backed up. When Bear Stearns was put together with J.P. Morgan, that was an amazing thing. It rallied a lot. So let's throw a little balance in here. Let's try this, right? You cannot say at the beginning of 2018, which we did a show on, you cannot say that all the data globally is so good we're in a global synchronized recovery that it can't get better so you should sell stocks and then you can't come into this year and say wow the PMIs are so horrific that you got to sell stocks like so what you just said opposite. when you were introduced though you said that there's a there's a case to be made for testing the lows for, what's for the case? pulling back I think the case to, that you've always done that in a non-recession crash and you're straight up 15 percent so so maybe it's not a, I don't think it's going to be retested low honestly you I think, think we're just going to pull back a little bit to maybe to 26 what's that you said three percent downside yeah three to five percent downside you could and you could do that tomorrow Right? So my whole case is if you think you're going to get a new high in 2019. That's like no downside, really. I mean, calling for 3% downside from these okay, levels. Okay, so that sounds silly, nothing, right? right? So yeah, it does. Which is now 2%. Here's cause, why you do yeah. it, because down 3%. Guys like me are famous for coming on TV. All corrections are natural, normal, and healthy. I'll buy it when they happen, and we're full of it. You get down 5%, and all of a sudden you're running for saying, the hills because you got it, except for, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly, except for the Just fast kidding. money team. Just kidding. You know, but... We're full of it. We think that we're going to say, okay, we'll buy the weakness. How many people were really buying a whoosh thinking that, okay, we're not going into recession? I am highly convicted, as you guys know, we're not going into recession. You don't have an inversion of the yield curve, and it's typically three to four years from the date you peak the ISM and the NFIB small business optimism index until you get into a recession. So, Is there risk in the market the Fed raising rates, in your view, or in the back half of the year? Or is the Fed raising rates in the back half of, half of the year really signal that the economy is fine? No, I think it's. I, I think you got to have a Fed rate cut. If you're in a 1995 a analog, yeah, I think you got to have a Fed rate cut sometime this year. You're getting weak data in Germany. You're getting weak data in China after. So some you think we're gonna movement. we're gonna bring in weakness from elsewhere? I think we've already had. We're in it. How do you know? We don't even know because we don't have the government data. It was closed, right? So the some of the data that we've had has starting to weaken up. 
And you can't trust the employment report. You had 100,000 job revision in the month before. So is the call for new highs based on easy, easy money fed. in the United yeah. States? It's an easy money globally. It, you go so, from this so then, tightening okay, cycle. Okay, so you're in that camp. You're in that Jay-Z camp. Mm. Joe's Idol, in yeah. case you guys tuning in and, are wondering. Jay-Z is not making a call. Joe's and Idol. we're not talking about a Rodney Dangerfield um, movie. Look at it this it, way. It, should be, it doesn't it mean you go into a bear are, market if you don't cut, Mel. But does it mean we're going into, it, uh, I don't want to say a bull market because we're not going to flip the switch like that. We're but in, in an environment, if you believe that that easy money is the key to a stock rally of some sort, it'll bring the S&P 500 to new highs. Does the same apply to markets around the world? It does. And you already start. Here's an interesting So thing. global synchronized weakening. It's already excessive. Indicates a buy signal for a global stock. So what's the data to support that? If you look at the global PMI year over year change, they're actually where they were. They're below where they were in 2016 at the low, and they're near where they were in 2011. The Citigroup Economic Surprise Index for the G10 or the major economies is actually inflecting and starting to turn higher. So you actually have green shoots showing that as bad as the data wow, was in Germany, shoots. that you could actually turn a little bit. How about no, that's that? That's a sweet old term. That's I mean, like a 2008 tie, term. Man. Using yeah. your tie. Green shoots. <laughs> 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 you wore it in honor of. Huh? Okay, so, no, so you actually are having bro. early signs of that. Right. And if you okay. add, but in the U.S., because the, the 210 spread is so flat, you need to bring the two down. You need to re-steepen the curve, right. May, maybe back to 30, 40, 50 basis points. Okay. That can kind of kickstart a little bit of a refi uh, right. activity. Tony, great to see you. Thank you. Great. Tony Thanks, Dwyer, Thanks for having ingenuity. me, guys. Good thing we had Tony just I right was, here, was. ready to go. I mean, just when we needed him. Grasso, what do you make of Tony's call? I, I don't know. He, I love Tony. He covered all his bases. But? He covered all his bases. Uh -huh. I think if we if we uh, sell off a little bit, that sounds he's like still he, covered. Oh, and wow. If, you're we, saying that he's just CYA. That's kind of like one of those, with all due calls. respect, <gasps> God bless his soul and kind of comments for you. And I'm saying it pretty much right to his face, but I think that he definitely covered all his bases. There I'm looking for. Or he's running weakening. out of here. I'm looking for weakening of the of the markets. For everything okay. that Tony said, put it up to the mirror, and I think that'll be the right answer. That's a pretty it, harsh assessment like of a guest who's still in the house. I thought I mean, you could buy like, the guest. I did. But now he's coming back. I, I have he's no control leaving. over you can't what he does. When I'm coming off. I didn't hit anybody. I'm, I'm sitting mine in my own business. Here. You guys, well, you guys you know, want to take this outside? It's going to pull back a little bit. It's going to hit new highs later on. If you don't expect a pullback, you will not be able to buy that. I've never done this. I love this. You've got it. We, we come on and we say we're going to correct, and it's not, it's not a hedge. If you don't expect that the market can correct, you get scared when it If does. the United States is so strong and your whole thesis is, is weighing on the fact that the Fed is going to be cutting rates, I don't think that's I didn't stands. say so strong. I said the U.S. economy is You said we're cool. nowhere near recession. The res no, we're nowhere you near have recession. to have an inverted. All right. From a time. So you, the data yep. points are not weakening. That's not right. The data points are weak. They are weak, but not to the point of recession. 1995, you went to 0.5% GDP growth in the first quarter and second quarter of 1995. You were putting 100% tariffs on the 13 top selling Japanese cars. 100%. They were as big as China is today, market up 35%. Why? Fed eased in July, and then they eased again in December, and it kick-started a lending cycle. Because the market rallied 15% after falling 14%. We've had extreme moves. The U.S. economy is not falling apart overnight. Bottom line is we went yeah, from 13 and a half on slow. forward earnings on the S&P in the end of December. We're now back up to 16, which is where we started all this. The earnings have been fine. Uh, we all know the, the rest of the world is equal as weakening. You're, you're, I, the earnings are going to be flat and on a forward-looking basis, and we're paying 17 times that. That's a little too aggressive for zero earnings growth. 2016, you paid 18 and a half time with negative earnings growth. Oh, good times. Boom. <laughs> All right. Boom. But it was a big Boom. I'm going to say goodbye yeah. for real. Now get out of here. Time I'm getting out. Now get out of here. I've had enough of you. Take his mic off, by the way. Turn it off. That's a fast money first.